Hi guys, Shelly Penny here with Twisted Fish Art and Jewelry and I'm here to show you today how to make a beautiful Christmas ornament uh, with some with a bead mix from Jesse James Beads called I Don't Sled, I Slay. This is a gorgeous mix for Christmas and uh, the ornament that we're going to make I'm going to show it to you in a second but I'm a firm believer that you don't need to have a tremendous amount of skill and you don't really need to have a lot of equipment or tools or anything like that to make something beautiful right out of the gate. This project is a beginner project. It uses minimal tools um, and, and it uses minimal um, skill really. It's a very simple project and the end result is absolutely gorgeous. So let me show you what we're going to be making today. All right. So this is a bead from the bead mix called I Don't Sled, I Slay. And I'm just going to see if I can hold it still for a second so the camera can focus on it. Hopefully you can see that. Anyway, it's gorgeous. I have um, a bale on the top here that's, that's big enough that I'll be able to hang it on my Christmas tree. Um, but this is an ornament that you're going to be able to... Um, if you just make the, the bale a little bit different, you can use it as a gift tag on your present for somebody special. Um, you could also, um, because it's small enough, you could also make the bale just a little small loop and you can use it as a necklace, which is kind of fun to make. Wouldn't that make a nice pendant for a necklace? It's just about the right size. Okay, so first I've taken the beads out of the mix already that I'm going to use for the project, but I wanted to show you the mix I'm using and all the beads I still have left over. This is the mix that Jesse James Beads sent me called I Don't Sled, I Slay, and it comes packaged with this cute little bow that you can use for a different project. So look at all the beads I still have left over. I'm going to dump them out here in the shell for a second and we'll take a closer look. Now I have to tell you my favorite is this cute little candy cane mint pendant and uh, the two little ones that I'm probably going to make earrings with. I'm definitely going to be using those. Then there's these two Christmas trees that are just perfect for ear wires. I probably won't do anything else with them except pop them on ear wires and they're the easiest earrings ever. And then there's a whole lot of other things. These little bows, some large hole beads, some large hole with rhinestones, and a little bell. That's really cute. Some more bows, of course. Look at these cute little glass lampwork beads with a little pattern on them. They're really cute. These faceted uh, squares, which are awesome, shiny. And then a lot of other spacers and rhinestones. There's all kinds left here to make several new projects, and I probably will be showing them to you later. So let's put those beads away off to the side, and we'll get started with our project. Now, as I said, you're going to need an assortment of beads, which I've already taken out, and I also use one of the little bows that's really cute from that mix. I'm also going to use some wire. I've got a 26 gauge wire here. I'm using magenta but that's just because I didn't have any red in a 26 gauge. It's very close, so when the project's completed, they won't be able to tell anyway. And I'm going to take off about an arm's length. I didn't really measure it in, well, I think my arm's probably about three feet long. I'm just going to snip that off and get it ready. And then uh, you're just going to need some basic tools to go with that. I'm going to use um, my pliers. I might not even need them, but they're there in case I do. The cutters and some bail making pliers. If you don't have bail making pliers, don't worry about it because I'm sure you've got anything that you have in your office or even in your bathroom, nail polish or whatever, to make a, a partial loop at the end for our bail. That's the only thing we're going to use it with. And I have a head pin. So now I want you to take your wire and fold it in two and bring the two ends together. I'm going to start picking up my beads. The first thing I'm going to do is pick up a green bead. That's going to be in the middle. And I'm just going to squish the two ends, sort of form them around that bead so I can make sure I stay sort of in the middle of the wire. And then on one side, I'm going to pick up a 
small bead. So I'll start with white. Then on the other side, I'm going to pick up a large bead, one of the rondelles, and uh, I'll pick a white one up. We'll start with that. Bring them all the way down to the bottom there. Now I'm going to pick up a red and white stripe. It's going to be in the middle too. So I've already picked up a green one for the middle. I'm going to pick up a red and white stripe and I'm going to cross the wires over through the hole of the bead. Like so. And then I'm just going to work the wire down to the bottom. Be careful that it doesn't kink. This is a time when you don't want to rush anything. Just sort of work the bead down on the wire, straightening as you need to. Don't pull too hard or go too fast. Just take your time. And then once you get it down, give them a good tug and secure them. So now you've got uh, something that forms a little circle. I'm going to take the two ends and I'm going to pick up this time um, a small red bead. And on the other side, I'm going to pick up a green one, one of the larger rondelles. And move those down to the end, and then we're going to pick up. Oops, drop that red. <laughs> move them both down, and then we're going to pick up uh, the green one next for the middle. Cross the wires through the green bead, and then work that its way down to the bottom. Now the thing about wire here, I've chosen wire because it's a little bit sturdier material for something that's going to be probably put away in a box and used every year. But you can use all kinds of materials for this technique. You can use fire line, you can use thread, you can use cord. So our piece is starting to take shape a little bit. You can see how it's starting to naturally curve because we've got the small beads on the inside, the larger beads on the outside, and the moderate beads in the middle is starting to sort of turn in on itself, which is exactly what we want. So we'll continue with the large red bead on the outside, a small uh, white bead. I think we're on the white bead now on the inside. We'll move those down. And then we'll add the red and white stripe. This is the bead, remember, where we're going to cross in the center. And then gently pull those threads so that the red bead moves down. Take your time. You don't want to kink your wire. And just work it down into place. Once you get it down there, you're going to tighten your wires. Give them a good tug. Straighten them out, and then continue on. So now we're going to pick up a white. And we're on the red bead on the inside, the small one. And then we're going to get one of those moderate sized green ones for the center. And again, we're going to cross through. One of the other things about wire is that uh, I don't have to use a needle. Um, I really like using wire for that reason. I'm not much of a, I always feel like I'm sewing when I have a needle, when I'm using it for beads. And uh, since one of the stories I tell myself is that I'm not, uh, I don't like sewing, <laughs> even though it would be the same, you know. Okay, so... We're going to grab a white small bead for the inside. And now um, I'm going to choose, I think, the red bead. I think I want to uh, repeat the pattern backwards so that um, it just gives it a different look. And you'll see when they're finished that I want one red on either side of the white, the green up there, uh, so that those beads will be opposite one another in the finished project. And then we're going to put the red and white stripe bead on, and we're going to cross in the center. 
work it down. And this project, as you can see, it comes together very, very quickly. I am a firm believer that you don't have to know a whole lot about making jewelry or crafts to make some beautiful things right out of the gate. This is a beginner project. It's super simple. It doesn't require a lot of tools. Uh, it would be even great for uh, kids, I think, with supervision as a way to get them into crafting. Because it's, you know, it's, um, what do I want to say? A simple project with high impact. So we're going to cross through that green bead again. Take it nice and firm there, pull those wires. Now we only have one large bead left. So I'm going to pick up that white bead, put it on the outside. If I can ever find the hole. <laughs> pick up a white bead for the inside. Pick up the last red and white stripe for the center and cross through for the last time. And bring those wires together. Give them a nice firm uh, tug there to make sure that they uh, that you've got tension in your circle there. And now the last part we need uh, for the top of the wreath, I want to have that pretty bow. So I'm going to pick up one bead, one more white bead for the bottom to finish that circle. And then on the top I want that bow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small red bead and then once I get that on the wire there, pick up the bow and you can see the bow, gosh, I'm not focusing very well, but in the center of the bow, there's a little round loop and on the end of the points, there are holes at the end of those. So the wire will go right through there. And, it, and it'll come out the other side. Let me just see this. There we go. And then I'm going to put another red bead on the other side of that bow. And then we're going to take the end of those wires and feed them through the green bead that's already attached to form our complete circle. So I'm taking the lower wire first and feeding it up through. And we're going to gently bring that through the bead and then pull it good and tight for some tension. This part can be a little bit tricky, but it's not difficult. So I'm going to take that upper wire and we're going to feed it down through that same green bead. And just hold the uh, beads in place and slowly work that wire down through. All right, so that's the finished circle, that part of the project anyway. I'm going to take the lower piece of wire because we're done with that for now. Um, and I'm just going to secure it a little bit. I'm going to anchor it. So I'm going to go through another bead. Pull it good and snug. Take your time here because this is where you might get a kink. So just take your time, guide it through. Um, and then I'm going to make sure that everything's good and snug. And I'm just going to anchor that wire by wrapping it around a couple of times one of the uh, bottoms of one of the beads. I just feed it in and out around the bottom of one of the beads just so that I'm going to be working with the other wire 
I want to uh, make sure that this part of our work doesn't come loose. So you can see I'm just sort of feeding it in around the bottom of that red bead. It's, I'm wrapping around the wires that are going into the bottom of that red bead. That just gives me something to um, wrap around, it's sort of like tying a knot, you know, just to anchor it. I'm going to do that a couple of times, make sure that that's not going anywhere. All right, so now we're going to work on the top. You see some gaps in between my large beads that I just want to fill in with uh, some of the smaller beads. So I'm going to pass through that white bead carefully pulling that wire through. Again, watch for kinks. That's the only thing with wire that you don't really have to worry about so much when you're using Fireline. You don't get kinks in it. So I guess there's pluses and minuses to everything that you use. As long as you're aware, um, and just take your time, you'll be fine. All right, so we've got that through. Now I'm going to add, to fill in those gaps, I'm going to add two white beads. And then we're going to pass the wire through the green out the other side. Now usually um, this, is the, this is the point where you're most likely to get kinks. So I usually try and move those two beads to the end of the wire right up against the bead that we just came through and then just very carefully work the wire through that hole. I'm going to add another two white beads between the green and the red. There, got those through. That's looking good. Now on the bottom here, I'm going to add just one red bead. Sort of working within the space there. Sometimes if you add too many beads, um, you force your, your piece out of shape. And uh, I want to encourage you to, after you try this technique with this ornament, you can try it with different shapes of beads, different sizes. You could try it with um, two small beads on the inside for each round instead of one. Um, I encourage you to try this technique with a number of different shapes and sizes of beads because you're going to be surprised at how different your piece can look, how much bigger, how much smaller, depending on the size of the beads and the curve of the circle and you can get some really beautiful pieces with this technique just by varying the shape of the beads and the sizes. So again we're moving that down. Wait, I took another red one there. All right, now I'm going to grab two white beads again. This is a point where you can lose patience. <laughs> Hang in there. We're almost finished there. Get those beads right to the end. Next to the bead we just passed through, that wire will come through a little bit easier. The wire starts to get a little bit brittle sometimes at this point too. Um, so you just have to be a little bit extra 
careful, a little bit extra patient to avoid getting kinks in your wire. There we've got that through. We'll take our last two beads. Now we're going to pass through that white bead for the last time. There we go. So the ornament is complete. Super simple. The last, all I have left to do now is to secure the wire ends and cut them off. So I know I already went around and um, secured this wire a little bit, this, this piece. I didn't cut it earlier because sometimes your wire will break the other piece that you're working with or whatever, and then you can just um, pass that wire up through and continue from the other side with the wire that's uh, that's intact. So I didn't need to do that this time, which is great. So I'm just going to uh, wrap it around, secure it, and then cut the ends. And then I'm gonna do the same with the other piece of wire. Now, the nice thing about the this little ornament is that it's multi-purpose. You can use it as an ornament for the tree you can also use it as um, a tag for a present or something like that. And you know what? It's small enough and lightweight enough that you could use it as a pendant and build a necklace around it as well. So now I'm just going to take that last uh, little bit of wire. I'm going just around the wires that are coming out of that red bead there. I'm just going to wrap it around a couple of times, make sure it's secure, and then cut off the tail. Okay, so we're finished. Now all we have to do is add a bail. So I'm going to take this head pin, and remember I told you earlier there were holes in the in the bows there at the points. So I'm going to take that head pin, and I'm going to take it up through the top of that bow, and then I'm going to just bend it over and use my bail making pliers. Again, if you don't have bail making pliers, you could take anything that you have around, um, a little spice jar a bottle of nail polish, anything that's the right uh, shape. Now, this is going to be an ornament that hangs on the tree for me. So I'm using the largest uh, round of my bell making pliers. And I'm just going to pull that around. Once I get the pliers in the right position, I'm just going to... All right, let's try again. I'm going to take the bell making pliers and just pull the tip of that around and then just adjust it a little bit so that it's going to hang on the tree properly. And that's it. The project is finished. Now, like I said, this project could be uh, for the tree, which is what I'm going to use it for. It could also be a gift tag. If it's a gift tag, just take that loop and make it a little bit smaller. Or it could be a pendant for a necklace. And if it's a pendant for a necklace, then all you have to do is make a small loop right there at the top for your bail to pass the chain through. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this quick and easy tutorial. This is Shelley Penny with Twisted Fish Artisan Jewelry.